Good evening to you. We are glad to have you join us for another one and a half hours of news from different parts of the country and beyond. Stories for tonight are treated with extra touch to serve you all perspectives of unfolding events in details. We begin with what many look would like to call the pleasant twist in the narrow deadline courtesy of the nation's apex court. If you are conversant with Nigeria's oil history, then you should know the place of Oloibiri. Yes, the Federal Executive Council sat on a major fallout is at the approval of more than a hundred billionaire contract for the construction of an oil and gas museum and research center at Oloibiri in Bielsa State. Just as the INEC boss briefs the high-level meeting on readiness for the general elections and talking about the general elections, it is 16 days away and the wooing game and election promises are on the upswing mode as the target date draws closer. On the other hand, our security agencies strategizing in order to bring in their A game towards a peaceful election. The NTA is equally not left out in the preparedness for top notch coverage of the general elections. Our lineup of special reports are ones you shouldn't miss. It is at the dawn of a new era for Nigerian workers as the new helmsman emerges. We have business and of course sports. We have much more on tonight's package and the only way you can get the full package is if you invest the next one and a half hours of your time with us. After all, the taste of the pudding is in the eating. So sit back because your Wednesday night just got better. I am Fatima Omar Buba and this is News Extra. I welcome you all. You can follow this news live on our website nt.ng slash live nt news now and other social media platforms displayed on the screen for updates. Now, the Federal Executive Council has approved a 117 billion naira contract for the construction of an oil and gas museum and research center at Oloibiri Bielsa State. Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Pre Silva, announced this while briefing journalists after the meeting of the council, presided over by President Mahmoud Buhari. State House correspondent Adam Sambo has the details. Oloibri by Elsa State is where oil in commercial quantity was first discovered in Nigeria over 60 years ago. The approval for the construction of the oil and gas museum, a research center there more than three decades after the project was conceived, presented a unique opportunity to correct a historical oversight. Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Silva, told the council that the museum would also preserve the heritage and developments in the oil and gas sector as data, equipment and tools used in the Nigerian oil and gas industry will be stored for posterity. The research facility, he said, will also close a major gap in the nation's quest for homegrown technology inputs required to service exploration and production activities in the Nigerian oil and gas sector. So this actually is a major milestone and is expected to be a major legacy of Mr. President in the Niger Delta. The minister used the opportunity to reassure Nigerians that the federal government is not leaving anything to chance towards addressing the lingering fuel crisis in parts of the country. We are not happy at all uh, what is going on. Uh, every, every hand is on deck. Today, there is supply. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the distribution and movement of the product uh, to various destinations, we are experiencing some bottlenecks. And I, I want to assure you that everything is being done. The NMPC Limited, NMDPR way, all the marketers, Everybody's hand is on deck to ensure that this problem is resolved. We have reports of uh, profiteering by marketers, and I have I've directed NMDPRWA to sanction anybody who profiteers uh, 
on this kind of situation. I mean, we cannot uh, stand by and watch our citizens being exploited by marketers. Aviation Minister Hadi Sirika also secured a 121.2 million Naira approval by the Council for Technical Support and Maintenance of the Malam Aminu Kano International Airport Kano for a period of 12 months. The minister gives update on the national air carrier, Nigeria Air. We've got the aircraft ready, they're painted in their colors. We've gotten across all the T's and dot the I's. Uh, we're at stage five of the AOC issuance by um, NCAA. And once that is done, the airline will begin to fly. It will be very, very, very soon, with the emphasis on soon. Meanwhile, before the commencement of the council meeting, a moment of silence was observed in honor of the late Air Commodore Dan Suleiman. The deceased, who was a federal commissioner for special duties and health in the 70s, also served as military governor of Plateau State and Nigeria's ambassador to the Russian Federation. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. The Supreme Court has temporarily halted the move by the federal government to ban the use of the old Naira notes from February 10, 2023. A seven-member panel led by Justice John Okuru halted the move of the federal government in a ruling in an expertise application brought by three northern states of Kaduna, Kogi and Zamfara. The three states had specifically applied for an order of interim injunction restraining the federal government through the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, or the commercial banks from suspending or determining or ending on February 10, 2023. The time frame with which the now older version of the 200, 500, and 1,000 denomination of the Naira may no longer be legal tender. The interim application is pending the hearing and determination of the motion on notice for interlocutory injunction. Moving the application a short while a short while, counsel to the applicant, Uthman Mustafa San, had urged the Apex Court to grant the application in the interest of justice and the well-being of Nigeria. Delivering the ruling in the motion, Justice Okoro granted the interim order restraining the federal government through CBN from the continued implementation of the new monetary policy. The Apex Court has adjourned to February 15, 2023 for the hearing of the main suit. In the meantime, the All Progressives Congress APC presidential candidate Bola Ahmed Tinubu has hailed the governors of the 36 states for standing on the side of the Nigerian people over the central bank, new naira and cashless policies that have subjected the masses to pains. In a statement by uh, the Director of Media Publicity, APC Presidential Campaign Council, Bayo Onanuga, Chinubu said the governors, especially uh, the APC governors who instituted the suit against the CBN and the federal government at the Supreme Court, acted well on behalf of helpless Nigerians. The APC presidential candidate noted that they have saved the country from a needless political and economic crisis and miseries which have clearly become the unintended consequences of the monetary policy of the Apex Bank. He said that the federal government and relevant stakeholders can now work out better framework on how to proceed with new policy without causing any social and economic disruption and inconvenience to the people. Money Master Payment System Bank Limited, a subsidiary of Globacom, is providing an opportunity for financial inclusion for the unbanked and underbanked population through its flagship product, g -Cala, designed with seamless and multi-purpose features for cash and cashless transactions. Joel Bokwala reports that the product has been integrated into the Nigeria Interbank Settlement System. <laughs> With 49% of Nigerians not having bank accounts, the Central Bank of Nigeria's 95% financial inclusion target by 2024 can be fast-tracked through opportunities provided by Money Master Product G Color, which has been activated on all payment platforms. By dialing star 995 ash, prospective subscribers, according to the MDCEO, 
Money Master PSB Limited can join the platform designed to make financial transactions convenient. For you to open a Jikala uh, account, uh, all you need is just your phone. Your phone number is your account number. And you don't, your phone, you don't even need to have a data. And uh, we are coming to the market with a unique service offerings. Remember that uh, we, are, uh, we are leveraging on the assets of our parent company, Globacom, and definitely that could give us a kind of a very good advantage. The unique selling point of G-Kala is the unlimited transactions where registration can be done without the BVM. There are 3,300 kiosks already deployed and we have 1,000 kiosks to be uh, deployed very soon. And you can see the kiosks, you can go there to do blue services, but you can also do G-Kala services. Stakeholders already benefiting from the G-Kala speak on the gains and what makes it preferable. My phone number is my bank account. More or less that my phone is my wallet. So it's a huge milestone for us as a country, for a brand, as we to have a subsidiary like this. It's something we all should be proud of. It's, it's beautiful. Jikala is coming at the right time when government is really serious about its cashless policy. And I know that with Jikala, I mean, things will be a lot easier because with Jikala, you can actually use any phone, not necessarily an Android phone. Over 20 participants in the launch of the Jikala Smilum with 5,000 Naira in their Jikala account. Established in August 2020, Money Master PSB, which began operation on 30th May 2022, has been launched in more than six states, while plans are on the way to spread its tentacle across the nation in a few months. In Lagos, Joel Bukbola, NC News. Adapting to change can be an uphill task sometimes. That appears to be the case with the introduction of redesigned Naira notes and the cashless policy by Central Bank. Pastor Eba reports that though many decry the timing of the policy due to immediate effects on their livelihood, more people are adjusting gradually to the new normal in the financial transactions. Start of events in the financial system due to scarcity of cash. Since the inception of this policy, the trend is changing and most Nigerians seem to be adapting to the cashless policy reforms and cutting down on excessive spending. There's no uh, time for extravagances any longer, you know, the cashless policy. But like I said, if that could be improved upon, it could solve a variety of problems and more money will be will be in the system than in people's in private hands. For a very long time, Naira has been abused. Understand? Because most of the time when I watch all this TikTok of a thing, you see celebrities do wedding, people like abuse the currency. So, and I think this is going to put a stop on it. Naira being a symbol of, of, of our country, I think we should give it the value it deserves. And I, I really encourage the government to stick to her guns. It will be painful, but all they need to do now is to find ways to make their new currency available and accessible to the low income earners. Realizing these challenges, the CBN has revamped up advocacy on the e Naira and other payment platforms to curtail excessive dependence on cash. But what are the long run benefits? POS, ESSD, uh, mobile banking. If you want to move money back to the banking industry, our money are no longer in the hands of people. The visibility around money supply and inflation can be taken. What you have is visibility around money supply. It has security. So the counterfeit people, uh, we are not going to counterfeit it. And uh, number two, the uh, management of cash will be reduced. Basically, make cash much more expensive to use, so that you use alternative channels, and that way it costs less. It's uh, easier both on the customer and on the processors, the banks, and all that. As Nigerians adjust to the digital creative measures of cashless policy, experts say there must be a shake between the CBN commercial banks and telcos as clearly the policy needs to balance on this tripod. When the INARA was launched, that also would have served as a good as a good option. But also that too has its challenges. It hasn't been embraced properly by Nigerians. Probably because the awareness has not been created for that opportunity. There's 
that in the coming days, problems that come with electronic transactions will be reduced to the barest minimum to boost the confidence of Nigerians in the system. In Abuja, Bosse de Abel, continues. Thank you, Basadi, for that. Now, the International Monetary Fund, IMF, has urged the Central Bank of Nigeria to consider reviewing the swap deadline if concerns persist. The fund, in a statement Wednesday in Abuja, said the advice became necessary in light of hardship caused by disruptions to trade and payments due to the shortage of new bank notes available to the public. In spite of measures introduced by CBN to mitigate the challenges in the bank note swap process, the IMF, IMF therefore is encouraging CBN to consider extending the deadline should problems persist in the next few days leading up to the February 10, 2023 deadline. And away from that now, a chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, is reassuring Nigerians that the 2023 elections will hold as scheduled. The chairman stated this while speaking to newsmen after briefing the Federal Executive Council on preparations for the general elections. We took members of council through um, all the preparations that we have put in place for the election and the few challenges that we are facing and the steps that we have, take, uh, we have taken to address those challenges. I can tell you two of these challenges quickly. The first one is availability of petroleum products. We had a meeting with the National Union of Road Transport Workers and they raised that as, a, as, as an issue of concern. Immediately after that meeting, we interfaced with the leadership of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited. And right now, there's a technical committee working. The idea is for them to avail us the use of their over 900 land mega stations as well as floating mega stations nationwide for the purpose of stocking products to ensure that the commission doesn't suffer any encumbrances in movement of personnel and materials for the election. The second one is the currency issue. And again, we had an engagement yesterday with the governor of the central bank, and he assured us that the commission will not suffer any encumbrances on that score. Fortunately for us, all our accounts, national and state, are held by the Apex Bank. So we raised those challenges, but we have found a solution to those challenges. So we rest assured that the election will hold as scheduled on the 25th of February for national and on the 11th of March for the state elections. Well, Chairman Einek there. Global attention is on Nigeria, Africa's largest democracy, as it moves towards the conduct of the general elections slated for February 25 and March 11, 2023. It is in this light that National Assembly Joint Committee on Electoral Matters engages stakeholders to review the extent of the implementation of the Electoral Act 2022. National Assembly correspondent Lamy Ali reports. February 25th, 2023 will mark one year since the signing into law of the Electoral Act 2022 by President Muhammadu Buhari. And by coincidence, Nigerians will on this date in 2023 head to the polls for the presidential and National Assembly elections. This engagement by the National Assembly Joint Committee on Electoral Matters is convened to assess the implementation of the electoral law and understand its strengths and weaknesses in line with the commitments of parliament to a free, fair and credible process. It is therefore an opportunity to review the details of the act in relation to experiences of implementation and the prospects of enhancing its workability. The committee has noted with dismay the attacks on INEC facilities we were hopeful that with the collaboration between INEC and the security agencies, election will be held in the areas concerned. 
The rule of law is the foundation of all democracy. Democracy doesn't exist without the rule of law. We need the judiciary to stand up, to be independent, and there's quite often a lot of pressure on the judiciary. What will help to reduce the tension and uh, challenge that the country is faced with is the holding of the elections as scheduled. The Independent National Electoral Commission says it is set for the exercise, having executed 12 out of 14 activities scheduled on its timetable for the general election. The Commission has received election funds required for the conduct of the 2023 general election and this has assisted the Commission in carrying out its activities timelessly. We have over 600 cases emanating from the implementation of this electoral act. It shouldn't be so. Senate should look directly into how to curb INEC power to deregister parties because that does not promote democracy at all. Let us go and get our card and that's what you use to, to vote for whoever you want. What we require INEC to do is to do what we refer to as substantial compliance. Once there is evidence of substantial compliance, the election is deemed to have been held uh, fairly. As the countdown continues, stakeholders urge authorities to ensure participation of eligible voters, while ANEC emphasizes on all participants to play their part to make the process a success. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NC News. And despite the rejection of the local government autonomy bill by some state's assemblies, some Nigerians are still keeping their fingers crossed that the remaining state legislature will vote in the affirmative. That's getting it passed and signed into law before the end of the Ninth National Assembly. This is in consideration of the developmental roles local governments will play if allowed to operate with full financial and administrative autonomy. In this special report, John Yaku examines the situation against its effect on local government administration in Nigeria. The 774 local governments in Nigeria are the product of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to bring development closer to the grassroots. Many years since the return to democratic rule in 1999, many Nigerians believe the desired development at the grassroots leaves much to be desired because of local governments' over-dependence on state governments through the joint account committees and on democratic process of leadership at that level. Un unless on what the state government will say take as their share, they do not have the power to execute. There are some certain projects like the local road, the market, and then other things that may had a development to the local government. Attempts in the past by the National Assembly on the autonomy for local governments was several times rejected. Even when it comes very close, uh, the states seems to be the problem. Recall when states as an assembly voted against their own financial autonomy at the behest of their governors. Today, Many of those lawmakers are living with the guilt of that poor choice. The Ninth National Assembly during the fifth alteration of the 1999 Constitution Senator. passed the local government autonomy and forwarded it to state assemblies for concurrence. The House of Representatives and the Senate approved 44 of the bills without differences and were transmitted to the Senate uh, to, to the state houses of assembly for their resolution. Several months after, 27 out of the 36 state assemblies submitted their reports with 15 states voting in favor, two abstaining, nine yet to submit their reports, while 11 rejected it with only Oyo State Assembly approving financial autonomy but rejected the administrative autonomy. Nigeria is a federation of states. It's not a federation of states and local governments. Uh, but yes, um, I'm sure that if, if local governments on the common front wish to uh, seek for uh, judicial interpretation, they can do that. How did we get here? Association of Local Governments of Nigeria and the National Union of Local Government Employees speak. We are carrying alone. Our argument is those that are rejecting local government autonomy they are called saboteurs. What is the fate of local government in Nigeria if the remaining states vote against it? We hope that the, the few that are left will make the difference that we need 
But in a situation where they don't, I think the tenth National Assembly would have the the responsibility again to go and follow this route of constitutional amendment. But the public, the citizens, will now know where the problem lies. For now, nobody is sure of what will happen between now and the terminal date of this present administration and that of the Ninth National Assembly. In Abuja, John Yaku, NTA News. Thank you, John, and thanks for staying with us on News Extra. Let's take some time out at this point when we return. It is going to be part of the development of the state and the country in general. Asuaju Bola Tinubu made the pledge, among other commitments, at the Kogi presidential campaign rally of the APC in Lokoja. Muswal Omohab reports. The APC presidential campaign train go to Kogi to hold a heart-to-heart -heart session with the citizens of the state, but what they met on ground was a carnival with party loyalists welcoming the team to the Confluence Stadium, Lokoja. <laughs> The campaign council commented on some issues of the moment. We have all heard about the Supreme Court ruling. While other parties are dwelling and joyful that what the government of APC has done to the detriment of the people, they are happy because they thought that would be to the benefit in the 2023 elections. Unfortunately, that will never happen. And so the implication is that if you have new Naira, if you have old Naira, make you the user color color. Kogites have longed for the full rejuvenation of a Jalkota steel complex and dredging of a river Niger. The APC presidential candidate said these are part of his plans in addition to the industrialization and development of the mineral resources in the confluent states. Agriculture will be our means of livelihood and prosperity. Amen. In all centers, have so potential for great mineral industrialization, fabrication, engine building, and industrial development. I guarantee you, I know how to do it. I'm smarter than the academy. Kogi is the 30th state visited by the APC presidential candidate as he presents himself as the best option to pilot the affairs of the country. From Lokoja, Musbao and Wahab, NC News. In the meantime, the All Progressives Congress has restated readiness for the general elections and expressed confidence that Nigerians will renew the party's mandate in a peaceful, free and credible electoral contest. In a statement, however, National Publicity Secretary of APC described as false and misleading media reports in some quarters that the All Progressives Congress is pushing for a postponement of the 2023 general elections. The general elections, the APC said, are a matter of extreme national importance and should not become a matter for speculation by the media or any institution. Meanwhile, the Atiku Okowa campaign organization has reacted to purported moves by the APC campaign organization to postpone uh, the elections and set up an interim national government. Still talking politics, the Accord Presidential Council has described Professor Christopher Imomolen as a man of wisdom with good networking whose records in academics is outstanding and has the capacity to take Nigeria to the next level if elected as president. This was the submission of the council at its presidential mega rally in Abuja. Linda Okori Igwe was there. A rally to canvas support. Christopher Imumalen and his deputy seeking the mandate of the people we just few days to the presidential election. Voices of hope, assurances offered for a better future of the people. 
So it is very important that Nigeria must see the 2023 election as a, an election that is about our life, an election about the livelihood of our parents, an election about the education of our children, an election about the reduction of hardship of the economy. Our professor is an expert in digital transformation. So once he is elected as president, he will make sure that that is 100% digital transformation in Nigeria. The party relayed to the crowd the need to collect the permanent voters' card, which will serve as a getaway to exercise their franchise. Abuja, Linda, Kobe, ATMs. As Nigerians look forward to the general elections, concerned citizens have stressed the need for a conducive voting environment that will ensure credibility of the outcome of the exercise. To achieve this, they are of the opinion that political gladiators must shun any action that can trigger violence. Let's now join Kingsley Amajiri, who spoke with a cross-section of Port Harcourt residents as he brings us details of Port Harcourt, especially as the elections draw closer, is the issue of political violence. This time, the campaigns are on. We have Felix Dambari, who is also a resident of Port Harcourt, who would like to get your thoughts on the issue of political violence. Could you tell us, tell us how do you feel as a citizen of this state? And the way it is, is going now. It's going violent every day by day. People are campaigning and complaining about what is happening in their campaigning ground, which we don't like it. And what we expect any other person to do is the day of that election, come out with your PVC and vote the person you like so that tomorrow you will not complain. If um, at the campaign grounds, dynamite, bombs, shootings have been thrown out at, you know, at, the, uh, at the people. So that's to give to put fear into the people not to go and vote. The violent attacks at various campaign grounds should be addressed for keen observers. This is very critical if the electoral umpire must deliver a credible elections. The security agencies, they also say, have a key role to play. If the electorate are not assured of their lives, many will not come out to vote. And that is a very big problem. And then even if when they come out and when the security, uh, there is lack of security, the integrity of the election, of the result will be compromised. The true essence of democracy is the plurality of views, the views of the people in the society. And for a number of the keen observers of Nigerian democracy, this plurality of views should be allowed. So we are going to vote for a candidate of our choice, but we are still warning the politicians not to tamper with the mandate of the people. Elections, no doubt, is a leadership recruitment exercise and provides the platform for the electorate to choose who they hand over the realms of governance in the society. As we head towards the 2023 general elections, there are calls from concern Nigerians and observers that the responsibility lies on the authorities, especially the security agencies, to provide the right platform for the electorate to cast their vote and make decision of whom they hand over the realms of governance after May 29, 2023. In Port Harcourt, I'm Kingsley Amajuri, NTA News. In another story, the Nigerian Immigration Service is strengthening its workforce to ensure non-Nigerians do not participate in the 2023 elections with no fewer than 6,000 illegal documents, particularly voter cards, already seized across border commands. Victor Azu reports that the Controller General of Immigration gave the indication at a two-day retreat for zonal coordinators and all command controllers in readiness for total border security before, during and after the general elections. The Independent National Electoral Commission is planning a successful general election and so are miscreants plotting to destabilize the process. National ID card and voting altogether 6,216 altogether, whether from non-Nigerians. Security agents also appear to be up to the task 
With more than 3,000 national identity cards and in excess of 2,000 voter cards so far retrieved from non-Nigerians by men of the Nigeria Immigration Service. As the culprits are apprehended mostly in the border states, they are swiftly repatriated. We have collected uh, this uh, national ID card and voter's card. We have eased out the uh, immigrants. Don't forget the uh, ECOWAS protocol allow movement. They are mostly from ECOWAS uh, region. And then we hand over to INEC and then NMC because they are not our documents. Comptroller General of Immigration, Issa Idris, says the Electoral Act 2022 has now become a legal burden on all players in the process to show high level of responsibility. This explains this meeting to ensure the illegal migrants are continually beaten in their own game. The most important thing during the election is patience. We are not supposed to take part in any way. We are not supposed to be seen to be aligned or biased to any political party. The zonal coordinators and all command controllers will during the sessions be put on high alert to identify, arrest and prevent foreigners from participating in the coming elections. In Abuja, Victor Azu, NTA News. The First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, and the President Africa First Lady's Peace Mission has expressed heartfelt condolences to the First Lady of Turkey over the deaths of thousands of Turkish citizens during the devastating earthquake which ravaged parts of Turkey. The First Lady on behalf of her family, the Nigerian women as well as the African First Ladies said this catastrophe, though a natural phenomenon, has once again revealed the vulnerability of the global communities to natural disasters and the need to promote partnership and cooperation to save humanity while joining the rest of the world in prayers for the people of Turkey to overcome this sad event the first lady also prayed for the families of those who lost their loved ones and quick recovery for the injured you definitely have not heard the last of lineup on politics as there is more to come your way welcome back federal government has urged uh, the Federal Road Safety Corps to strengthen its collaboration with other security agencies for effective deployment of personnel to ensure successful conduct of the 2023 general elections. This was at a first quarter of 2023 FRSC Corps Marshal's strategy session with Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, and Commanding Officers, Oyemi Ajayi, has that. After being sworn in as a substantive corps marshal of the Federal Safety Corps, the first test before the Corps now is the forthcoming general elections. With strategies being mapped out for proper road management in preparation for the elections, the Corps is now ensuring the certification of all vehicles presented by the various transport unions engaged by INEC for transportation of logistics while warning that no command or officer of the Corps should show or exhibit partisanship during the elections. Show that there is orderliness at the pol uh, polling booths. Our men will be deployed and also to control uh, general movement of uh, vehicles because there may likely be restriction of movement of vehicles across uh, local government areas or across uh, wards, as the case may be. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, represented by the Permanent Secretary, General Services Office, Namdi Mberi, charged the call to ensure each free movement before, during and after the elections. The Corps has an important role to play as part of an integrated national security architecture whose role is strategic for the success of the 2023 general elections in Nigeria. Another contentious issue the Corps plans to address is the alleged extortion and high-handedness by patrol teams. Oyeyemi Ajayi, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Inspector General of Police, Usman Al-Ali Baba, has set up 
and election planning monitoring and evaluation team for deployment across the state of the Federation. A statement by the force indicates that the team is expected to identify, analyze and mitigate threats as well as carry out on the sports assessment and appraisal of the security emplacement ahead of the 2023 general elections. The IGP also approved the appointment of AIG Garba Baba Umar, Vice President Interpol, as the national coordinator of the team of police officers with vast knowledge in election security management to be assisted by the fourth secretary AIG Habusani, eight commissioners of police, 15 deputy commissioners of police, 30 assistant commissioners of police, 31 chief superintendents of police, and 16 strategic officers of other ranks were also appointed. Meanwhile, an electric offenses desk domiciled at the state criminal investigation departments has been established in all commands across the nation. And away up from that, Sultan of Sokoto and President General, Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Mohammed Saad Abu Bakr III, says adequate enlightenment of eligible voters is key to their active participation in the electoral process. This was at a one-day public sensitization uh, workshop towards a free, fair and credible 2023 general elections in Nigeria, organized by the National Mosque in Abuja. Tokbe Alabi reports. 2023 general elections would be the seventh since Nigeria's return to democracy in 1999. But this time, Nigerians are expecting something different as the election umpire is certain of improvements in preparation and conduct of the polls. Lessons from previous elections where actors used various methods to circumvent the system is the reason National Mosque is holding this sensitization program to educate more than 93 million registered voters to exercise their franchise wisely. But the more people meet and discuss, the better the understanding. And the better the understanding, the better the success in whatever we have put ourselves in. So we are adding believers of dialogue. Let's continue to meet one another. All responsible and respectable stakeholders need to engage actively and contribute to a better and desirable outcome, as that is the only way to ensure quality representation, peaceful coexistence. I would like to therefore appeal to all of you to be habitants of goodwill and extend this is very solemn message. Apparently, knowing the provisions of the Electoral Act and the INEC election guidelines will make the difference in the coming election as the gathering pitches against vote trading in apathy. As religious leaders who always talk to people, here also we are talking to Nigerians religiously to appreciate that an average politician whether he throws up ethnicity or religion could be duplicious. It's for us to look at who has capacity to empathize with the people. We need to talk to our children, we need to talk to our husbands to make sure that the election is free, fair and credible. We should shun all forms of violence. Expectations are that many Nigerians will eventually vote wisely and ensure that there is peace, tranquility and togetherness before, during and after the elections. From the National Mosque in Abuja, Tokwe Alabi, NTA News. In another development, the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, as part of its mandate, conducted a fresher calls for reporters across the zone to keep them abreast of political reportage in line with the 21st century reporting for efficiency and to, of course, cover niche in the 2023 general elections. The results of the training is what played out in this next report, where a team of reporters in Abuja X-ray the provisions of, of the Electoral Act's provision for persons with disabilities. The clock is ticking. The day for the election is drawing closer. 
The electorates are fully prepared and the electoral umpire is not left behind. The question is, what are the provisions of the 2022 Electoral Act for PWDs, meaning persons living with disability? This is what we are about to unravel. Ola Jide, what did you find out? Yeah, yeah, thank you very much, Aisha. Section 54, subsection 1 and 2 of the Electoral Act 2022 specifically provides that INEC shall take reasonable steps to ensure that persons with disabilities, special needs and vulnerable persons are assisted at polling units with suitable means of communication, such as Braille, large embossed prints, electronic devices, sign language, interpretation or off site voting in appropriate cases. Now, Dan Babatum is the head of units CSO and PWD's INEC FCT. The commission has already taken into consideration those um, issues that were raised in the 2019 general election. If you notice the 2022 area council elections FCT, there were improvements and right now we're already uh, uh, we have our aggregated data that we're going to use to highlight those polling units that those special needs are. So, and adequately we're going to deploy our Braille ballot guides according to those uh, aggregated data that we have and we'll uh, deploy it to the necessary polling units. Now you've heard the level of preparedness on the part of the electoral umpire for persons with disabilities in the February and March elections. Now, Grace, what do you have from your own end? Thank you, Olajide. There is ability in disability, according to a popular saying, including fundamental human rights. This also captures the right to vote. Uh, section 54, subsection 1 and 2, which speaks specifically to uh, inclusive election. Um, that singular repeal and replacement of that clause have enhanced the participation of persons with disability in the electoral process. Tessie, we have heard that the 2022 Electoral Act will enhance inclusion and this means a lot for persons living with disabilities. Do you agree with me on this? Yes, Grace. Interestingly, 16% of over 90 million registered voters are persons living with disabilities. And you know, as a ray of hope beckons, now, what are the expectations in the forthcoming elections? Sometimes you may even feel like not voting before, but at least, and I believe the Electoral Act, the 2022 Electoral Act will help because there's a provision for us. In fact, there are some of our people that are even involved there of which it will help us to have easy access to voting. <laughs> She said that they should make it possible for all the disability, not only deaf, so that their own line, their own space should be special. Somebody should be there to attend to them. That will make it possible for them to vote uh, friendly. Now, for the plight of the lives of Godia to be alleviated, practicability of the provisions of Section 54, subsection 1 and 2, is a renewed hope to ensuring persons with disabilities are not disenfranchised in the February and March 2023 elections. As you can see, they are optimistic. In Abuja, Tessie Omeri, NTA News. Nice, I must say, NTA. You can't beat the rich. Sorry, I have to flaunt us. Still staying on the fresher calls for NTA reporters across the zones. This next report is a question begging for answers as the countdown to the general elections gradually closes in. Correspondents are set out to find out if the deployment of bimodal voter verification system BVAS introduced into the electoral process by INEC will encourage more participation of voters in the general elections. The countdown has begun. Nigerians are going to the polls again to elect new sets of leaders in the 2023 general elections. The stakes are growing higher. Now, the electoral empire, that is the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has given assurances at different fora to hold a credible elections. This they are doing through the introduction of technologies, one of which is the uh, bimodal uh, voter accreditation system, that is the Beavers. 
This, they say, is one machine that will ensure that every vote counts. Now, we are on the streets of Abuja to sample opinions of Nigerians on how they feel about being inspired by this mission. Even before Beavers, I've always been highly political. I come out to vote. It has given us uh, some level of confidence and trust in the electoral process. So I want Nigerians to come out. For me, I'm always there. This is the best thing that's ever, ever happened in this country. Elections are all about leadership recruitment. And once you don't get it right, you don't have good governance. This time around, I'm going to fu be fully part of the election. I want to see how possible we can make things to be better in Nigeria. The situation in the Oshun state where we have our voting, I don't understand how you can vote without being accredited. So I hope it works. Actually, some of the people who have shared their thoughts with us commended INEC for the initiative and have expressed the willingness to be part of the electoral process considering the deployment of technological devices by INEC. I have with me again some vibrant Nigerians who are going to share with us their views on the use of VIVAS in these elections. I know that they are competent, so I cannot say that yes, I've given 100% assurance, but I believe in them that they will do the right thing. Though there are some discrepancies, more especially in the previous election but despite that I still believe that yes there will be a, a kind of improvement this this time around it will help Nigeria to have a good election and with a total of 176,846 polling units across the 774 local government areas in the country it is the belief of eligible voters that deployment of the beavers during the election would be significant in assessing the integrity of the 2023 polls Kenneth, what do you make out of this? Thank you, Ifani. For me, the responses from a cross-section of Nigerians, I would say, represent the views, hopes, aspirations and opinions of a greater population who are expressing the confidence in INEC to conduct a free, fair and credible election, especially with the deployment of beavers in few weeks to come. Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. Well, thank you so much, our correspondents, for that. Indeed, we are ready to cover the 2023 general elections here in the NTA. In continuation of its tour of the 13 local government areas of Ebony State, the APC governorship campaign train, driven by Governor David Omahe, has assured that the party will not relent in its mandate of putting the state on the world map. Caleb Wibun now reports that the governor and the party's governorship candidate, Francis Mufuru, gave the assurance while canvassing for votes at the APC rally in Eza North, council area of the state. Governor David Umayhu re-emphasized the importance of power rotation in Ebony State, said it to engender peace, equity, justice, and progress. He insisted that APC is the only party that will transform the fortunes of the state for all round development. As our nation is my nation. They voted for me. The governorship candidate of APC in Ebony State, Francis Mwifuru, is of the view that based on his antecedents, Ebony people will experience a new lease of life if elected. Let me promise the two people of Azanos. I am going to disappoint them with a very good lofty protest. There is nobody that can stop the moving train of Ebony in suing APC states. The chairman of the council area, Moses Ogodali, urged the people to vote in APC due to the numerous legacy projects executed by APC government at all levels. The entire secular are prepared and willing to support you, to vote for you. The candidates were later given will you blessing by the traditional rulers. In Abakaliki, Kele Bobuna, NTNU. An end of an era and the beginning of a whole new journey. However, the drive remains attaining decent work for Nigerian workers and engaging government towards good governance. The new national president of the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, Joseph Ajero, assures this at the NLC 13th Quadrennial National Delegates Conference in Abuja. Joseph Orsing has that. Forward ever, backwards never, in solidarity. A change in leadership 
these members of the Nigerian Labour Congress will not in any way change the struggle for decent work. The Yuba Waba led executive hand over the baton to the NLC new leadership headed by Joseph Ajoro. I will discharge my duties to the best of my ability. We have demanded equity and fairness in the sharing of our nation's resources. More functional and accessible education system for our children, increasing access to high quality medical care, high quality road infrastructure, increasing access to nutrition, and generally elevating the factors that increase human well being. Uh, one of the most difficult, I can say, is uh, basically this whole issue of the economy. The economy has not worked well for workers, especially those on fixed wages. All system members of the new regime were elected on polls, and speakers here believe in their wealth of experience and capacity to press home demands of the Nigerian worker. Ensuring social justice is prioritized in national and global policy making, in development, cooperation, and trade and investment agreements. To defend Nigerian people, to defend Africa and Africans. Make sure that our refineries work and we refine uh, enough petroleum products for our national consumption. Then the West African market is the place where we can get additional revenue. A leadership NLC that is more vocal, that is more result oriented, not a lukewarm leadership. The new era of four years is coming on board, few days to the 2023 general elections that will usher in new administration for Nigeria, which for many will be an opportunity for a fresh start at both levels. In Boja, Joseph Utsen, NTA News. Let's head to Damatru now, where former Vice President and Presidential Candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abokra says, if he is elected President, his administration will take decisive measures to address threats of, to security in Yobe State and the entire country. He was addressing supporters at the August 27th Stadium in Damaturu, Yobe State. Onoto Yakubu has the report. Atiku Abubakar arrived venue of the campaign hoping supporters will replicate the same enthusiasm shown to the PDP on election day. Among those who welcomed the PDP campaign team were youth and women groups who presented the candidate with campaign support crowdfunding and certificate of endorsement. National Chairman Senator Iocha Ayo presented the party's flag to the state's PDP governorship candidate. Sharif Abdullahi then received the campaigns into the party. Let us assist ourselves and vote the party PDP. Atiku Abubakar, by the grace of God, will provide job opportunities for our youth, will ensure uninterrupted educational programs in our institutions. Atiku is a gentleman. Who needs what? He needs the jumper, he needs the trouser. And the jumper is the senators. The trouser are the members of the house Atiku Abubakar told the people of Yobe that his mission to rescue Nigeria will address the mirage of security and economic challenges that has dragged the state backwards, make agricultural production attractive to the youths of Yobe state for gainful engagement to curb restiveness. Peace will return to Yobe and we will make sure that our schools are open so that our children will continue to go to school. We also promise to empower our young men and women by giving them capital so that they can set up businesses, so that they can also live successful lives. He has come to bring us to a new Nigeria that we can all be happy with. And God will help each and every one of us as we continue to work for the PDP. The state's governorship candidate disclosed that with the support of a PDP federal government, he will strengthen ties with neighboring Chad and Niger Republic to enhance trade and economic activities for the growth of Yobe State. From Damaturu, Yobe State, Onotu Yakubo. 
In the next segment of News Extra, ECOWAS takes proactive step in there. It's now time for me to hand you over to Musa Abakar uh, for Business News. Musa, it's over to you. Thank you, Fatima. The International Monetary Fund IMF says Nigeria's economy has recouped the output losses sustained during the COVID-19 pandemic, supported by favorable oil prices and buoyant consumption activities. Gross, gross domestic product adjusted for inflation has already reached its pre-crisis level, and the third quarter of 2022 marked the eighth consecutive quarter of positive growth, despite continued challenges in the oil sector. Growth is estimated at 3% for 2022. This is as IMF Executive Board concludes 2022 Article 4 consultation with Nigeria. The IMF directors welcome the broadening of Nigeria's economic recovery but noted that the opportunity to reap the benefits from higher global oil prices was missed. They underscore near-term downside risk arising from elevated inflation, high debt servicing costs, external sector pressures and oil sector volatility. Looking ahead, directors recommended decisive fiscal and monetary tightening to secure macroeconomic stability combined with structural reforms to improve governance, strengthen the agricultural sector and boost inclusive sustainable growth. And to energy, oil rose for that straight day on Wednesday as investor concern is about U.S. interest rate hikes and industry report pointed to a drop in U.S. crude inventories. CNBC reports that Brent crude rose 0.8% to $84.36 a barrel. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude climbed $0.80 cents to $77.94. And to stocks, Nigeria's equities made a rebound midweek to recover from losses recorded in Tuesday's session. The LJ index log 0.23% uh, to settle at 54,427.05 points. 151 million shares exchanged hands in 2,974 deals valued at 1.81 billion naira. Equity capitalization closed out the session at 29.644 trillion naira. Universal Insurance, Transco and Guarantee Trust Holding Company were the most sought after stocks. And that concludes business news. Fatima is back to you. Well, thank you so much, Musa. Let's head to Lagos, where the Lagos State Government, through its Internal Revenue Service, has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Federal Inland Revenue Service to ensure effective tax administration and tax compliance through joint operations and information sharing across the state. The MOU signing event was witnessed by Governor Babajide Sangwolu and Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Clem Agba, in Lagos. Musa Toliet has the details. Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Clem Agba, says the MOU signing by the Federal Inland Revenue Service and Lagos Internal Revenue Service seeks to remove hindrances militating against tax collection and create an avenue for more revenues to be collected by the federal and Lagos state government. Revenue to GDP currently is at 6%, and that's awful. The lowest in the world. We cannot be proud of that. Uh, the current national development plan's target is to grow it to 15%, at least by 2025. And what we have done today is a step in the right uh, direction. We see a, a more efficient tax administration. We see a better GDP growth of you know federal government and the state government and eventually it is the citizens that benefit from it you know government will have a bit more resources to be able to do the things for which it has promised the citizens the revenue collection agency stated that the era of devising various methods to evade tax by some corporate entities has now been effectively dealt with. We have to do a joint audit, we have to block revenue leakages, so these are all things that were set out there to do. It's mainly around sharing of information, exchange of information, it's around the ability to fish out all the recalcitrant especially high net worth individuals. The minister wants more states to take a cue from the partnership and work with the federal government 
to raise tax compliance for increased revenue collection. In Lagos, Musa Toliat, NTA News. And Nigeria's plan for a digital economy is gaining momentum with the emergence of technological innovation driven by young digital entrepreneurs. This is part of the gains of the Nigerian Communication Commission's annual ICT Innovation Competition 2022. Joel Bokwala reports that the theme of the contest is utilizing indigenous solutions to bridge digital divide. Acquisition and management of foreign software by government ministries, departments and agencies, as well as the private sector, is costing Nigeria billions of naira annually. Stakeholders therefore agreed that homegrown solutions has become inevitable to stop the capital flight. The NCC is keeping pace with the rest of the world by encouraging Nigerians to take advantage of the government digital economy blueprint with the annual ICT innovation competition and exhibition of breakthrough in technology solutions. This competition is aligned with the Nigerians whose Nigeria's digital economy policy and strategy, uh, specifically pillars 5, 7 and 8, which focus on digital service development and promotion digital society and emerging technologies, and indigenous content development and adoption, respectively. The latest innovations are part of homegrown solutions that improve the successes recorded by the digital economy plans of the government by creating more jobs to add to the over 2 million jobs already created in the sector. The innovations offer solutions to a wide range of teething problems such as digital literacy, access to healthcare and flood alerts. With our platform, we can be able to know when and the magnitude of the, of, the, of, the, of the flood, where when it's going to be affected, is to affect the particular community. The solution has to do with eradicating uh, lack of information for pregnant women in the South communities, then also creating an environment where mothers will be able to present their children for proper immunization. Other stakeholders say digital economy template of Nigeria is already bridging the digital divide. All the things I see today were not existing last year, so which means uh, a lot is being developed by the Nigerian technologies, engineers, and app developers. All this foreign exchange spending will be reduced. Number two, it will also help us to attain self-sufficiency and self-reliance. Winners will be announced and rewarded at the end of the competition. In Lagos, Joel Bukbola, NC News. An action plan for the implementation of the ECOWAS Commission Disabilities Inclusion Act has been validated and are now ready for rollout in member states. Kelvin Unuaye reports that the Nigerian strategy through the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities is to be used as a template. The ECOWAS Disabilities Inclusion Act, passed by the regional parliament in 2022 and validated late last year put emphasis on member states to see disabilities inclusion initiatives as national investments. It addresses fundamental issues of discrimination, especially in employment and other economic and social exclusion for persons with disabilities in the sub-region. Nigeria's rapid successes in disabilities inclusion and policies development was applauded at this workshop put together by the ECOWAS Commission to train focal persons for the full implementation of the action plan. Our role as an, a regional organization is to provide a platform for you and a voice for persons with disability. We have had instances of people who were seen before as a time of death. Only try to kill the chicken and they became blind. So disability can come to any one of us at any time. <laughs> program now I will not be able to read it not because I don't know how to read but because I be, because it, it is not printed the way I will be able to access it. The training is to be replicated in other member states to enable implementing agencies in the sub-region move in the same direction. In Abuja, Kelvin Ewonwaye, NTA News. So far, so good. We take our last break for the night after. As the race for the hosting rights.